Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. All of our believers, let's greet one another. Let's have a faith of Martha. With that, the title today is Why Must We Stay Awake? So these days with the ongoing heat wave and tropical nights, managing our condition has become increasingly challenging. So the number of heat wave days has doubled and the number of tropical nights has tripled compared to previous years, making the summer truly hot. And so we really feel that global warming has intensified and we have experts saying that the situation will worsen each year. It will become even hotter each year. Why is that? It's because of Genesis chapter 3, even the weather. Because of Genesis chapter 3, even the natural things has all become twisted. And so before Genesis chapter 3, there was no such thing as death. And even up until the flood of during Noah's time, people lived a very long time. Even Abraham lived to around 900 years. But after the flood during Noah's time, the protective layer of water that once surrounded the earth, that disappeared. Because of the sin of mankind, God had to create the flood during Noah's time. And so... Once that protective layer of water disappeared, the earth was exposed to the sun's scorching heat. And that's why from then on, people started to have shorter lives. And that's why no matter how advanced medicine or science might get, people can only live to around 120 years now. That's what's been decided. As time goes on, science continuously has adva advancements and sometimes we're so surprised by all the products that they put out however on the other hand we constantly find ourselves in a continual environmental degradation and that's why we must bear the immense consequences of that So within our walk of faith, it is crucial that we live according to God's will and God's plan. And the Bible clearly shows that when we do not follow a spiritual order, things will eventually go wrong. Why did the Israelites become slaves? Why did they become captives and why did they become colonized? Why were they wandering aimlessly constantly? Why did they live that kind of life even though they were the chosen people? It is because they lived self-centered lives, completely disconnected from God's will and plan. They can call out to God, they can give worship to God even. However, within their lives, they were completely self-centered. Do you think God will be fooled by that? Do you think just because you go to church on, on Sundays, God will not look at your heart? So just like the title of today's message, this, com this represents a life that is spiritually numb and unawake. It's a state of being completely spiritually numb. The reason why the Israelites were chosen was to evangelize and save all the other people and yet they completely lost hold of that essence. They lost hold of why they were chosen, why they received salvation. They did not know that reason. And that's why they faced a regrettable reality. So today's passage from Mark chapter 13 contains the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples about the end just three days before he carried the cross. 
So this is what he said about the last age or the end times. And so this is often called the Olivet Discourse because he spoke these words on the Mount of Olives. And it is also referred to as the Little Apocalypse because it focuses on the end times. So through this passage, Jesus clearly explains what signs will appear as the end times approach and how God's children should live during these times. It is revealed very specifically. And the core of that is to stay awake. Stay awake. If we do not have the wisdom to prepare spiritually for the end times, then we will be deceived by rapidly changing circumstances. When Jesus came the first time, it was to save humanity, but his second coming will be to judge humanity. So God who created all things will come to destroy all things. And so there was a first coming, there will be a second coming. There was a start, and so there will be an end. I hope you truly believe that. So right now, we are living between Jesus' first and second coming. And we are actually at a stage that is closer to the second coming. And the timeline of redemptive history is moving towards His return, that second coming. And so through today's passage, our spiritual eyes must be open to see the various signs that appear as the time of His return approaches. Well, we must be able to open our spiritual eyes to see that and remain spiritually awake to prepare for that. And as the end time draws near, Satan will act and Satan will rage. And this is because at the moment of Jesus Christ's return, Satan and his demons they will be cast into the abyss forever Although they were temporarily able to rule this earth, that will all come to an end the moment Jesus' second coming. And so they know better than anyone that as time goes on, their time will come to an end. And so as time passes, Satan will try in every way to lead God's children away from the essence of spiritual life. And Satan will try various methods so that people cannot give successful worship, so that they cannot receive grace, so that they cannot hold on to the Word of God. But why are you here at church? Within your busy lives in the city, within this land that has a very complicated transport and a very complicated car park, why are you sitting here in this place right now? Why did God allow you to sit here? So that you will hold on to the Word. If you do not hold on to the Word, then everything is useless. The Word is unchanging for all eternity. If, even if everything disappears, the Word will still remain standing, so you must hold on to that. And God says that, I will give you the covenant, I will give you the Word through the pulpit message. So it's not a matter of just sitting here and then going and just saying, I came to worship. And it's not saying, I'm busy because of my roles in church, but it's all about holding on to the Word in this time of worship. Hold on to the Word of God. But Satan will try so hard to distract you from doing just that. Because just like the Israelites, if we fail in worship, that's failure in life. And so he distracts us so that we will lose the spiritual essence and focus on other things. And Satan will continuously implant negative images of the gospel and negative images of church or negative images of the church ministers. And when these negative images are implanted, then nothing will go right. You won't be able to give worship. You won't be able to do your ministry. And so Satan continuously leads you onto a path of that failure. And so given these circumstances, we must always be spiritually alert. We must be spiritually awake. And so Jesus constantly gives us trials 
various trials so that we will be spiritually alert. So there is a reason why Jesus repeatedly emphasizes the need to stay awake as he concludes his discourse on the end times. He continuously repeats that we must stay awake. Why is that? If we are not awake, we will fall victim to Satan's relentless attacks. That's what's happening. People who do not have the covenant, people who were unable to hold on to the word. So through today's passage, I bless all believers of Yewon Church to clearly understand why we must stay awake and triumph in spiritual battles against Satan and daily expand God's kingdom as absolute disciples of Christ. The first main point, deceptive age. Verses 28-29 reads, From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that He is near at the very gates. If you go to Israel, there are actually a, a lot of fig trees. And so Jesus speaks through the parable of the fig tree, emphasizing that we need to have spiritual awareness regarding the end of time. So for the Israelites, the fig tree was a tree that accurately indicated the four seasons of Israel. So in winter, all the leaves of the fig tree would fall, leaving only bare branches. But as summer approached, its branches would become tender and small leaves and the first figs would start to appear. And this signifies the arrival of spring. And the full harvest of figs occurs in summer. And just as the fig tree's leaves sprout and bear fruit, signaling that summer is near, the Israelites understood that the coming of summer also symbolized the end of times. The Jewish calendar is different to our calendar. And so, according to that Jewish calendar, Israel's new year begins in October because they begin the new year in, in fall. And so the end of the four seasons is summer. And so to say that summer is near was also understood as the end being near. So before today's passage, Jesus explained to his disciples the various signs that would appear in the final days. And he said that when these signs appear, they should know that his return is near. And so among the things that Jesus mentioned, there are things that we must pay attention to. And it says here that many will come in his name deceiving people. There will be many that come in his name deceiving people. So let's read Mark chapter 12, verse 5 to 6. And Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And Jesus said that there will be false Christs and false prophets that arise. And they will claim to be Christ or the returning Jesus. And they will deceive many people. That's what Jesus says. And we can clearly see this happening even in our country today. And so the Shincheonji Church of Jesus calls Imanhi the promised pastor, the one who overcomes the advocate. That's what they call him. But we cannot understand that. He's just an old grandpa. He's just an ignorant grandpa who came from a rural village. And yet they call him the promised one, the advocate. And so they take all the titles that symbolize Christ and apply it to him. And there's also the World Mission Society Church of God, which bear the sign that says Church of God. We even have one of these churches near our church today. And this Church of God, they call An Sang Hong God the Father. 
they believe that this man is God the Father. And so they don't sing the praise with the lyrics, Our Lord God who created the earth, but they say, An Sang who created. But then An Sang actually died. He died. And yet these people went even further and they said, if there is a father God, then there must be a mother God. And so they started claiming that there is God the mother. And they said, there is God the mother, which is Chang Gilja, who is An Sang Ong's wife. So they completely are idolizing this person. And yet this church of God is expanded across this nation. And I even went to the Philippines and they had a church there. So it's actually reaching out into the world. And so they are calling this person God the Mother. And so you know that these things are wrong, but some people who don't know the truth, they will just accept it as it is. And these things, they're not just happening overnight. They have been occurring since the early church, and they will continue to happen in the future. And what is more important is that these groups also use the Bible to deceive. And how do they do that? They manipulate and distort the scriptures in the Bible to support their arguments. And so their deception is very cunning and logical, which is why many people are deceived. And Jesus had already spoken about this in Mark chapter 13, verse 22. He says, For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Even the elect can be led astray, can be deceived. And so, deceptive liberal theology. And even the theology in our prestigious universities in Korea, those were schools that were raised up by missionaries, and yet now they're completely focused on liberal theology. And we also have Catholic doctrines. And we have religious pluralism. And so religious pluralism where people say, the church is one, all religions are one. So these things completely distort the essence of the Bible. And these ideas emphasize human reason and human experience to an extent where we are able to understand it. And so they reduce the content of the Bible to mere myths. Anything that they couldn't understand, they say that's a myth and say that it's not true. And so it's complete humanism at its core. So we are living in this world of deception and that's why we must hold on to the words of the pulpit and be spiritually fully armed. We must be fully armed according to the word. There's a study actually that shows women who check their scale, so a weight scale, at least once a week tend to live longer and healthier than women who completely ignore the scale. And I don't mean you need to check your weight every day, but it's a study that was done. And what does that mean? It means that to that extent, they are awake and taking care of themselves. They're taking care of themselves. And taking care of yourself is actually about restriction. It's not about giving everything and allowing yourself to do everything and eat everything that you want. But a lot of people, they don't work out because they think it's too difficult or tiring. And yet they live a very difficult life. So, being awake, that's very difficult. Because being awake is not something that is done automatically. You need to take care of that. 
You need to do that every day, taking care of yourself every day. Even uh, just one day, if you eat whatever you want for the whole day, you'll realize that you gain 2-3 to three kgs so easily, and your pants don't fit anymore. And if you l live according to how you want and eat what you want for a whole week, then you'll gain so much more weight. And it's easier to gain weight than lose the weight. And so... I'm sorry to talk about myself here, but this suit that I'm wearing right now, it's 10 years old. I've had it for 10 years. So this suit, it's from 2016 May. And so it's 2024 now, and so it's 8 years old. That's what I do taking care of myself. And so even your physical body, you need to constantly take care of it. So then why am I telling you this? It's because it should be like this spiritually as well. You must constantly diagnose your spiritual life and check whether the direction of your life is aligned with what God wants. Don't be held up in your own judgment and standard and your stubbornness. But constantly, through worship and training and prayer, you must diagnose your spiritual life and really make sure that your life is aligned with the fulfillment of the covenant. And that's what we do on the Lord's Day worship. And every Lord's Day, I'm actually on the 14th floor, and I can see all the cars coming into the church and coming into the car park. And I'm so touched by that. I'm so touched by everyone that turns up on Lord's Day. And I even know of people that come from the region of Yangyang in Gangwon-do, Gangwon province. And even last week, I saw someone that gave so much offering. And I thought, who is this person? Because I don't know everyone. And so I searched them up on our website and I saw that they were living in Gangwon-do, Yangyang. And another person, they were coming from the region of Pocheon. And so these people were coming from two hours away to our church. And I thought, this is astounding. They're coming from so far away, all to give worship to God. God will be so joyful because of that. And I really thought they are spiritually awake. So I bless all the one believers in the name of the Lord to be spiritually awake and live a walk of faith that is filled with transformation and growth. The second main point, the advent of the second coming. Verses 7 to 8 reads, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. So in addition to the appearances of the Antichrist, Jesus also said that as the end times approach, there will be increased wars, earthquakes in various places, and famines. And so many of these things are already happening all over the world right now. When I look at the war in Ukraine that Putin started, I wonder how a human being could do something like that. Why would they so ruthlessly attack a nation that is just living peacefully on their own? And they say that their invasion of Ukraine was a justified action. And recently when Ukraine attacked Russians, Russia's mainland, they said that that was a provocation. So it's justified for them, but not for Ukraine. So I really wonder what kind of mental state he is in. And furthermore, Israel and Palestine are at war, and there are war clouds gathering over Iran right now. 
And so the number of people dying from civil wars around the world is beyond imagination, and this will increase. And a few days ago, there were signs that a major earthquake, earthquake was about to strike Japan, and the whole of Japan is now on high alert. However, in verse 8 of the passage, Jesus says that these signs are only the beginning of disasters. So what we are experiencing right now, it's only the beginning, especially after verse 9 of the passage. It also says that as the end comes near, the gospel will be preached and the intensity of persecu persecution will become more severe. And this persecution will not just come from afar, but also through those closest to us, even our families. So persecution is not only defined by visible physical harm, but it could also be a clever attack using politics or culture or the economy and the media to prevent you from believing in Jesus. And so the walk of faith or the evangelism or the ministry or the missions that we are doing as, a, a, as an organization, we are doing it according to the Bible. All these movements are done according to the Bible and yet people are attacking us ruthlessly. Why is that? Because as the end times approach, people will be divided. People will be divided between each other. People will be conflicted. They will not be able to receive any grace. And if you can't receive grace, then I'm sorry, but that person will perish. And what's Satan's purpose? It's to make sure that people give a failed worship. If you give a failed worship, you cannot hear the word of God. You cannot receive grace. And so families will be destroyed. And so Satan's attacks will continue. We must remember that everything Jesus said 2,000 years ago is being fulfilled. It's being fulfilled and continued right now. And so we must live a wise life in preparation for the end. Verse 31 to 32 reads, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. After Jesus spoke of various signs of the end times, he stated that his second coming will surely take place. However, he says that no one knows about that day or hour, only God knows. And therefore, as long as we know that word, we will not be deceived by heretical groups. And I know that you have heard the gospel properly, and so you won't be deceived. There are many things that try to deceive us in the world right now, so really hold on to the word properly. And after Jesus tells us this fact, he gives us the answer to how we should live in these last days in a truly wise way. Verse 33 reads, Be on guard, keep awake. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The word that Jesus repeatedly emphasizes is to stay awake. We do not know when or how Jesus will return, and that's why we must always be spiritually awake. And we can see that the important thing in this life of being awake, how can we stay awake? It is being faithful and devoted to the jobs that have been given to us. And what is the greatest mission that has been given to us? 
If we look at verse 10 of the passage, it emphasizes that the gospel must first be preached to all nations. More specifically, in Matthew 24, verse 14, it says, This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. That's what it clearly says. So simply put, living a life that testifies the gospel of heaven, that is a life that is awake. Whether you go to work, no matter where you go, who you meet, your 24 hours must be focused on proclaiming the gospel. Whoever you meet, that's the life that is awake. That's the greatest method. Proclaiming the gospel to everyone you meet. Evangelism and missions are the greatest spiritual battles. And therefore, you must first become equipped with the word and with prayer. You must be spiritually equipped so that you can fight the spiritual battle. Only then will you be able to do evangelism and missions. The reason why you are not interested in evangelism and missions is because you don't have the word inside of you. You're not equipped, and so you cannot fight, and you have no reason to fight. And that's why I always emphasize what I experienced. And in the worldly ways, the way that I've changed my whole life around. That's the three todays. So today's word and praying with that word and then proclaiming that word. So have you gone out onto the street and evangelized? Have you gone to prison to evangelize? I really hope that there will be a lot of people that can say they've done that. This is the blessing that God wishes to give to you through the three todays. So really, it's today's word, today's prayer, and today's evangelism. And I said before, until I look and meditate at, on today's word, I do not even have breakfast. And then I pray that according to the role that has been given to me, and according to the people that I meet, please let me be able to proclaim this gospel. And that's how I start my day. And these three th these three things, they're not separated, they, they're all one. I was born into faith, and I am a pastor, and yet every single day I try to stay awake. So every single day I meditate before God. What about you? Do you say, oh, I've believed in Jesus for 30 years now? Whether you've believed in for 30 years, for 40 years, for your whole life, That is what Satan will use to deceive you. So live a life that holds on to the pulpit message. If you failed in worship in the place of worship, then go home and watch it again. Listen to it again and again. And I used to listen to the message every single day for the whole week. For around three years, I did this, where I listened to the word, the message. So do not fill yourself with the greed of the world, but fill yourself with the word. Because faith comes from listening. And really imprint the word as your own, through prayer. I pray to God, Father God, please let this word become imprinted inside of me. So you must pray with that. And evangelism is experiencing how that word is fulfilled in your life. And you can really confess and say, wow, this word really was done accordingly in my life. That's the life of an evangelist. And so these three come together in the biblical way to stay awake and you can receive the greatest answers in these last days through that. So I bless all members of Yawan Church in the name of the Lord to hold on to this truth and enlarge the tent in your fields. This is the conclusion. So there is a saying, the return of Christ can happen on any day and no day ex is excluded. So the return, the second coming of Christ, it can happen at any day, at any time. 
And one time I was meditating on this and I thought, and I thought, isn't it most likely that Christ will come during the prayer night on Friday at the Friday worship? And so we must really live a life that is spiritually awake and prepared. So write it down. Let's live a life that is spiritually awake. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 20, the believers of the early church confessed, He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And so it says, Amen, come Lord Jesus. It would be so great if Jesus came today. And years ago, I asked the question, who, who would be joyful if Jesus came today? And only one grandma lifted her arm. Only one grandma who had nothing else to do during the day. And I asked, why did nobody else raise their hand? And it's because they still had a lot of things that they wanted to do and achieve. Even if Jesus was to come today, you should be able to say, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Do not say, I lived my whole life and I've never been able to buy my own house and all my savings, I wasn't able to use it up. Is that what you're going to say? It shouldn't matter. You should be able to say, Amen, come Lord Jesus. And this conviction of faith is Maranatha. And that's why the believers of the early church, they greeted each other by saying Maranatha, which means come Lord Jesus. That's how they said hi to each other. And so it's a declaration to stay spiritually awake. And so this conviction of faith allows you to stay spiritually awake. And it means that we should be ready to meet the Lord no matter when He comes. So how does this manifest? It shows up in our fields. When you are proclaiming the true gospel that Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all of life's problems, you can remain spiritually awake. And so our pastor from Pakistan came today. not Pakistan, it's Dominican Republic. And that pastor was connected through pa uh, Pastor Chong Moon Shik. And he was a pastor, and yet he did not know at first that Jesus is the Christ. So I had to explain that. And that's the world right now. The world does not know. that Jesus is the Christ and fulfilled the three offices of being the prophet, priest, and king. And so the church that is built up on that conviction, that church will not shake or crumble down. So no matter what happens, the church will not crumble down because it was based on the conviction that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Yewon Church is really a unique church in that way. And so our posterity, our future generations will protect this church with what? With the confession that Jesus is the Christ. So really proclaim this truth. If you proclaim it, that's a life that is really spiritually awake. And the church has allowed you to take on that covenantal challenge. We have opened the doors for you to live a spiritually awakened life through our Star 10,000 2025 movement and through the movement of enlarging the four main tents of the church, the region, the True 37 nations, and your flesh and bone families. 
So if you stand on this journey of enlarging these tents, you will naturally stay awake. And even in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, the prophet Jeremiah confesses, If I say I will not mention him or speak anymore in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. And so he, he, Jeremiah is saying, I'm so, I would be so frustrated if I cannot proclaim Jesus Christ. And so I have an older cousin. Oh, there's a missionary and their older cousin who was also doing ministry and came and they confessed and they said, I went to Nigeria and I went into the jungle and I met the people, the tribes in those, uh, in those jungles. And there were language barriers and yet he went up into the mountains and prayed. And so he would give the sermons even by himself sometimes. And he said, I couldn't proclaim the gospel because of that barrier. And so they said, not being able to proclaim that gospel was so frustrating and was so painful for him. That's what Jeremiah is also saying here. So those of you that have the gospel really have the same heart of Jeremiah. Really have a spiritual standard or reach a spiritual level where if you cannot proclaim the gospel, your heart feels so burdened. So in this way, I bless all members of Yeowon Church in the name of the Lord to stand as historical figures who leave behind the eternal inheritance, masterpiece, and legacy. Let us pray. Living Father God, in this age where we see many signs of the end of time, let our young believers be able to stay spiritually awake and let us be able to do the work of saving souls in our fields and in the field where you have given us the mission let us proclaim only Jesus Christ and let us become spiritually awake every single day I pray in Jesus Christ's name Amen